Hi, my name, my name is Mackenzie Hagen, and I will be giving a short presentation, presentation on the City Corp, on the City Corp Tower concerning the concerning professional, professional engineering, engineering ethics, involved. ethics involved. The main objective of this presentation is to understand the truth behind the measure's actions during the City Corp Tower construction and decide if he worked ethically or not. To start off, let me give you a little background on the City Corp Tower. It was built at 399 Park Avenue, New York, which was the initial site of St. Peter's Lutheran Church. The church allowed City Corp to demolish the old church and build a skyscraper under one condition. A new church would have to be built on the same corner as shown in this photograph on the right. Lemaigier Engineering was the chosen contractor. They had made a name for themselves in creating structures with interesting cantilevers like the one needed to accommodate the church. The tower was completed in 1977 and was fully moved into by 1978. The City Corp Tower was the first of its kind to have pillars centered on its sides rather than its corners. This resulted in different constraints for the winds loads that acted on the sides of the buildings. After the construction of the City Corp Towers, Diane Hartley, a Princeton student analyzing the tower for a project, noticed design flaws in the wind loads and reported them to Le Megier's company. The diagonal braces, used as tuned mass dampers, which reduced building sway that were specifically designed for this building, were initially supposed to be welded together, but instead had been connected using bolts at the joints. This was a last-minute decision that was authorized by City Corp's insurance company. Le Megier double-checked his calculations with the bolt-joint combination and realized the fatal flaw that resulted in 40% difference in his results. This design flaw shortened the lifespan of the building to 15 years. With the potential takeout of 18 blocks of Manhattan, this put 200,000 people at risk. Now that you know the history of the City Corp Tower case, let's go over the core fundamental canons of engineering ethics set by the NSPE and ASCE. The core canons are to, up, to hold paramount the safety, health, and welfare of the public, to perform services only in areas of competence, to issue public statements only in an objective and truthful manner, to act for each employer or client as faithful agents or trustees, to conduct themselves honorably, responsibly, ethically, and lawfully, so as to enhance the honor, reputation, and usefulness of their profession, and to avoid deceitful acts. Le Megier was informed of the problem in June of 1978, and by August, the plans for reconstruction were underway. Le Megier acted in accordance with the NSPE by acting as a faithful agent and trustee to his employer. Because the instant he confirmed the initial calculations were flawed, he contacted Citicorp so they could begin eradicating the problem. He acted in an urgent manner to address the problem and to find a solution. This urgency illustrates that Le Megier holds safety and the welfare of the public to a high standard. Le Megier conformed with the values of NSP. It is my opinion that Le Megier acted to uphold these canons because he acted quickly to uphold public safety which is the most paramount canon. Many disagree with me, though, and say that by not doing more to inform the public, he was not holding safety to the highest regard. Ethics are interpreted differently from one person to another. The NSPE and ASCE do their best to outline exact criteria as much as possible, but there is always going to be differing opinions or new technologies that will fall through the cracks. It is up to us as engineers to know the fundamental canons and uphold them to the best of our ability. Thank you for watching, and I hope you learned a little about engineering ethics and the City Corp case.